On May 22, 2020, after 13 years of construction that began in 2007, the academic Lomonosov commenced full operation. It stands as the world's sole floating nuclear power plant. In this video, we aim to explore why Russia is constructing these new facilities and the strategic benefits they seek. Utilizing nuclear power at sea isn't entirely novel. It's a technology of paramount significance for military purposes. Nuclear-powered vessels can operate independently for extended periods, reducing their reliance on ports or supply ships. This costly technology provided substantial strategic advantages during the Cold War and was predominantly championed by the United States and the Soviet Union. The entire active U.S. aircraft carrier fleet relies on nuclear power, and France also maintains a nuclear-powered carrier. China, currently building its own aircraft carrier fleet, is also contemplating nuclear power usage in the future. Furthermore, Russia operates several nuclear-powered icebreakers and military submarines. Nuclear propulsion offers the advantage of extended underwater operation if necessary. Nonetheless, the academic Lomonosov is not a warship, and nuclear energy doesn't serve as its means of propulsion. Instead, it functions as a floating power plant capable of providing electricity for up to 200,000 people. The concept of floating nuclear power plants is not entirely new. The first was the MH-1A, a converted World War II cargo ship constructed for the U.S. Army in the 1960s and 1970s. However, this project was retired in 1976. The nuclear plant comprises two KLT-40 naval propulsion reactors already utilized in Russian icebreakers. With dimensions of 144 meters in length and 30 meters in width, it can supply up to 70 megawatts of electricity. The heat generated during nuclear fission can also be used for district heating. Given that the vessel lacks its own propulsion, it must be towed to its destination, and every 12 years it returns to the shipyard for maintenance and nuclear waste unloading. The completion of the academic Lomonosov took place in St. Petersburg, from where it was towed to Murmansk. There, it was equipped with nuclear fuel elements, repainted, and then embarked on its inaugural journey to its first location, PVK North, situated above the Arctic Circle. The power plant will provide energy for this diminishing port town and replace an aching power plant. Russia's goal is to mass-produce these floating power plants, achieving greater construction efficiency compared to conventional nuclear power plants. Besides cost savings attributed to shipyard assembly line efficiencies, planners anticipate a reduction in local opposition, a common issue when establishing new nuclear facilities. Moreover, these vessels can be easily relocated, potentially fostering greater acceptance of such projects. Additionally, these power plants offer versatility, bridging transition periods in regions undergoing structural changes and fulfilling short-term energy requirements for large construction projects or offshore installations. By examining Russia's coastline, it's evident where these plants will find application. The Russian Arctic is experiencing the impacts of global warming, and the Russian government is investing in this region. Diminishing sea ice in the Russian Arctic facilitates access to northern oil and gas deposits, and Russia aims to promote the use of the Northern Sea Route, a shorter connection between Europe and Asia. The period during which this route is ice-free each year is increasing. On March 6, 2020, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a strategy paper outlining Russia's intentions for the Arctic over the next 15 years. These intentions encompass measures to enhance the socio-economic conditions of communities in these regions and further promote the Northern Sea Route, as well as providing tax incentives for oil and gas projects in the Arctic. As part of these plans, Russia is revamping its nuclear icebreaker fleet, introducing two new classes that are expected to be larger and more powerful than existing icebreakers. The floating power plant is set to be a crucial tool in Russia's broader strategy to maximize the strategic potential of the country's Arctic region. For example, the Russian energy company Gazprom intends to use five of these floating power plants for offshore drilling platforms on the Kola and Yamal peninsulas. Public opinion on nuclear energy varies among different countries, with major catastrophes such as the Chernobyl disaster in 1986 and Fukushima Daiichi in 2011 leading many nations to abandon nuclear energy and phase out the technology. In various places, 
Nuclear energy remains a contentious political issue, where the risks of a catastrophe and long-term adverse consequences are weighed against economic considerations, energy security, and carbon emissions reduction. The Russian floating nuclear power project has also faced criticism from numerous organizations, citing concerns about the vulnerability of floating power plants to natural disasters, especially tsunamis. Previous incidents, such as a radioactive leak on a Russian nuclear-powered icebreaker in 2011, have contributed to safety concerns. Nevertheless, the operator claims to have thoroughly assessed the associated risks and ruled out any threats with the facility. Russia's substantial investment in an area not actively pursued by many other nations, in line with its goal to fully harness the potential of the Arctic, suggests that it won't be alone in this endeavor. China also has plans to construct floating nuclear power plants, potentially making this technology a strategic advantage for bridging transition periods or for remote regions seeking enhanced energy security.